Hi, and welcome to the Standout Stars Week of Kindness and Gratitude Summit and Giveaway. This is Brenda Pierce, and I'm here joining you with one of the contributors to the Secret Child Life After Loss book that is being so featured during the summit this, this time around. And with me today is Connie Batzel, who is a marvelous, beautiful soul who we joined and, and met several years ago in another book project. And um, little did we know along the way that the road of our intertwining and reconnecting would be through our children. And so Connie, I'd love for you right now just to introduce yourself, tell us all a little bit about who you are, and, um, and we'll go into the why we're here together and we'll move on from there. Yeah, thanks Brenda, thanks for the introduction. Um, my name is Connie Batzel, like you said, and I've been in the healing arts profession for over 20 years due to my own, um, my own health challenges. I went through a number of health challenges like vertigo, anxiety, um, headaches that the doctors could never figure out a treatment for. So um, my second child initiated me into alternative healing. So I learned massage therapy, Reiki, and then after that, when I had my, when I was pregnant with my third child, I decided I'm going back to school and getting my counseling degree because I wanted to do mind body work. So I got my counseling degree. So for the last 20 years, it's been that road of helping people through a holistic and integrative approach. And it's been an individualized approach. However, I remember in June of 2018, I have been hearing this calling for two years, put it aside, put it aside, step into leadership, step into teaching but I was comfortable working one-on-one -on -one with people in the massage therapy, Reiki counseling realm. But I remember pacing in my sunroom and I remember I'm done. I'm done. I called my partner. I said, I'm leaving the practice in September. This was June. And I did. I gave my clients plenty of time to, you know, have closure and find other, another therapist. Then in October, I couldn't completely let go of massage. I was doing it once or twice a week at my chiropractor's office. The last day I did massage was the day my son was killed. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was like, God totally yanked me out of that world. You know, like I've been asking you, I've been asking you, this is one way to do it. So since then, my healing work has really been primarily focused on me, on the power of forgiveness and coming to know myself and being able to live from my heart and speak with my voice. And I'm realizing that's my mission now is to give people the space to grieve because in our culture, we don't give people the space to grieve, but make them uncomfortable. I can remember people throwing their hands up at me saying, I can't help you find somebody that can, like, there's nothing you need to do, but sit and be with me. I'm not asking you to fix me. Just sit and be with me. Witness my grief because that's powerful. So I'm still in the healing, that healing energy, that healing archetype is still within me. And now I'm really stepping into it as, you know, doing spiritual counseling and Reiki online and writing. And I'm hoping someday to find the platforms to get out and share my story and how to help other people connect to their soul and to live from the soul. Because that's what's lacking. Humanity doesn't know how to connect to their soul. Yeah. Wow, what a journey. What a what a incredible journey. And, right. um, you know, and it's the journey of a few brave souls, really, to step right. into the, this, this role. And um, the writing is just the, the first part. The writing is the first part, the willingness has got to be there. But when you write, the projects come up to you, and they present themselves and it and you never know when or how or why but the writing piece to this Connie that really has solidified and brought you here with us today tell us a little bit about what that has meant to you in terms of being out there in this this sort of way where you bury your soul and you bury your child in such an open way what has right. that been? well i for me, the writing journey started with my journal where I'd sit down every day and just write what I was going through. 
And then I made it a point to share my journey that first year. I was on Facebook once a month journeying what it was like to be a grieving parent without my son. And I don't know, I didn't care. I didn't care what people thought because for me, it was catharsis. It was healing to share. And I would hear from people that not only was it helping people who, you know, who had lost children, but it was their parents because we don't talk about grief in our society or how to show up and be with grief. And we live in a society anyway, where feelings can be uncomfortable. So imagine it more so with grief and it's just metamorphosed. And now I find myself, I still share, I, you know, I, his birthday was just the other day and I put two or three posts out about it. It's healing. And when we're, we're writing about the grief journey for, or I'll say for me, it's keeping Christopher alive because my fear is I don't want him to die again. And when we stop talking about our, our loved ones on the other side of the veil, that's what can happen. The memory dies. So this is keeping, I don't know, the oxygen, the air going for him. What a beautiful gift. And, and what a beautiful gift your son is giving you in terms oh, yeah. of you being the legacy of his life. Right. Right. And, you know, he was a teacher to me because he was already a music journalist. He did a lot of video videos of himself and I watch him and it's like, he wasn't, he didn't care about being perfect. What he cared about was having a good time and, you know, making people have or help people have a good time. So I use him as my teacher too. It's like, and I'm getting past that because we're so afraid to show up because we have to be perfect. We're so afraid to step out and quit playing small because we got to have it, have it right. No, that's the problem yeah. is when we have to feel like we're polished. We, you know, that's not the way life is. It's okay to show up as you are where you are. And that that's a very, very valid point. And um, so so real and so truthful and um in a day and age where we're being bombarded with all kinds of information and misinformation you know when you bring it right down to the truth of what it really is and encapsulate it with love mm -hmm. then anything is possible right 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 the whole self-acceptance that was that that was the other thing my son taught me i you know we had people at his uh, wake that waited over an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours to speak to us. And the one thing that people constantly said was my son accepted them as they were. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so they could be themselves in front of him. And that's what, you know, that's what we all can do. That's kindness. You know, speaking, you know, we're in the kindness summit. That's yeah. kindness. Let people be who they are in the moment without judging, judgment and making them feel worse. Because sometimes we just have our bad days, our bad moments. And when you give them the space to you know, release it, they tend to move on. They tend to shift. Don't hold yeah. them with the guilt. Yes, yes, such a beautiful and loving thing. And, and uh, thank you for, for sharing that, that invaluable information. And, um, and it is truly kindness when we treat each other as we would want to be treated, accepted right. and empowered and, you know, filled, filling you with the gratitude of what each breath and each moment's all about, right? Right, right. <laughs> that's for sure. Because that's the one thing I've taken away too. It's the moments in life where I haven't shown up, where you know you become unhinged, and people are able to hold space for you to go through that unhingement. And then it's it's a I don't know it's a release. It's like you've been holding it all in, and it's like a purge, a purification, so you can shift into another mindset. If that makes sense. Yes, exactly. Because the thing is, so we in that moment where we were, you know, showing our stuff and and um, and and we're entitled to do that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, though, that um, we did the best we could at that time. And we have to let ourselves off the hinge. Right. The, right. Right. That that's perfectly said, because back to the whole perfect thing, we're not going to be perfect. There are going to be things that rub up against us and where I'm at now, it's not always easy to do, but when I do have those moments of irritation, it's what is it within me that it's asking to be looked at and to be healed? Because we're all teachers to each other. 
And I'm learning not, this is a process, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm learning not to take things personally. It's not necessarily about me. It's about what they're going through too. And how can I be loving to them? How can I have compassion for what somebody else is going through as people have had for me? Because I've had some very dear friends and family members that have held the space for me in the greatest heartbreak of my life. And there's still days, even though I'm three and a half years into this, there's still days where you have your bad days and you need somebody just to hold space for you and cry on their shoulder or get angry. And that's what I take into the work I do. I have clients that break down and they'll come back at me. It's like, you know, working with you is not necessarily like working with a counselor because you don't make me feel bad about myself. Like I'm doing something wrong. And it's because they're not, they're healing. This is their healing journey. And feelings are a big part of the healing journey. Being able to express yourself where you're heard is part of the healing journey. And that's what we, you know, in the healing field, that's what we offer people is that sacred space. Exactly. And that is such a beautiful place to come from because there's no, um, you know, it's not like you've got a hang up. You've got this ego thing. You're coming from a genuine space in your heart. And when you, when we, when we really communicate heart to heart, it changes the dynamic a hundred percent, doesn't it? It does. You're looking through the eyes of compassion. You know, um, I like, I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Alan Wolflick, who's a big, uh, grief, uh, grief expert. Nope, he talks about, familiar, but yes, you know, <laughs> but I, I really appreciate him coming up with compassionate companion, companion when we're going through people or helping people in grief. And it doesn't just have to be in grief. And we know, you know, of course, grief comes in many forms. I mean, I work with people in divorce, health crisis, parent or kids cutting them or their parents out of their lives. So, I mean, grief does come in many forms, but it's that compassion that you're talking about, the heart to heart, because when you're in the heart to heart, there's no, you are wrong for how you're feeling. I know better. Listen to me. I'm the therapist. It's we're going to do this together. Yeah. You have the answers. I'm going to help you find the answers because that's how powerful you are. And what a powerful thing that is. That's a powerful message. And the, um, and going back to our, our beautiful book, the secret child life after loss, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. Um, you know, we are now conjoined together forever between the covers of this book and what a beautiful thing it is when we, we join hearts and, and hands and messaging and we are healing ourselves just as much as we are reaching out to help others to heal. And, and sometimes this, this point of contact that would lead somebody to work with you through their process started because you dared to write your story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What a beautiful way. Yeah. And, you know, I really look forward to that because it seems like the book is really gaining momentum. I feel it's like, I know on my end, I'm trying to share it. I bought <laughs> books to hand out to people. I have no more books. <laughs> I'm, I'm done because I'm giving them, you know, to people that I know will help. I even took them to my grief counselor. I took a few into my grief counselor so she could hand them out to, you know, parents that she worked with, because like you said, there's stories in there that still, that speak to me. It's like, wow, they give me, even though I've done, you know, I'm, I'm in the grief of uh, losing a child, but we all are a big diamond. And in that diamond, we're each the facet holding some kind of beauty, some kind of color, some kind of texture to bring the wholeness of the experience, to make it more whole. That's a beautiful way of, of describing it. You know, it is the kind of book that you just want to give out. You know, yes. it's, it's here, read this, you know, no expectations, just read this. And it's it's not just for the grieving family, the grieving parents. And as we've shared and discussed before, the dynamics of mother and child are such that there is stem cell connection. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that that is why um, mothers seem to be the highest group of, of distraught people in the grief cycles because we are indelibly connected to our children, whether they're living or dead. And that's why that protective mechanism is there for mothers and, and their children. But we go extended and we go the siblings of that that loss, yeah. the, 
the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, you know, and then you get the friend circle, you know, everybody, everybody that this one person has touched, no matter how long they've lived, um, is it's an incredible, indelibly tight circle that when that one person is removed, we're all at a loss. And right. You, you take me back to, I remember Christopher's first birthday and he was a big KISS fan and KISS invited us out to go to a KISS convention in Indiana, which happened to be the week of weekend of his birthday. And like I said, this was the first birthday without him. And my mom and dad got to go with us. Wow. And I remember my mom looking at me. I don't know what I said, but she goes, not only did I lose my grandson that day, but I lost my daughter because there was still that pain in my face, in my eyes. And that hit me. And then she further went on to say, not one person just died that day. Five people died that day, meaning my whole family, because as she knew us, we had all died, you know, to the existence we were before Christopher yeah. passed away. And that you're right. It is like a rippling effect when someone passes away. And that's why, you know, it's important to find the right people to support you through the journey. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, there are Facebook groups out there where parents are like, I just want to die. Yes. You know, like, yeah, Yeah. we all have died when we lost a child. But to uh, to me, it's always like when somebody is that demonstrative, if Mm -hmm. that person dies, then they've wiped out that legacy of that child. Right. Right. No. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one, Brenda. I don't know if I've ever thought of it that way before, because I have to be honest, there are those moments. It's like, I don't want to, I didn't want to live anymore, but you're so right. Me being here, I carry on Christopher's legacy. Yeah. So th- thank you for sharing that. I don't think I ever thought of it that way before. Oh, you're welcome. Actually, that was the impetus to me to, to really finishing up this book. Because as, as you know, it lingered around for about five years. We were starting to collect stories. We were talking about this and talking about it and talking about it. And in the midst of that, you joined us. And then it was like, oh, my gosh, we really do have, a, have to get this going. It's not a, a matter of when, but when now can we finish this, right? Right, right. It's been on its own timing, but we're going to trust its divine timing. Yeah. And like, I don't know, you know, how far you guys were into it when you asked me to join, but it's like, I think it was all orchestrated. We know it's orchestrated by our kids and by, you know, the Supreme being God and the universe. So it's divinely timed that it's coming out now. And I can only imagine who we're going to be touching as they read the stories in this book. And my intention was to share Christopher with the world along with, you know, my journey and that there's joy in that for me. That's all, you know, there's joy in that. And I can't, I trust that it's going to touch who it needs to touch. Exactly. And as you say, it is the impetus. It's Christopher working through you to expand this amazing work that you've been doing all these years of soul searching and preparation and learning and, you know, preparing and and listening to guidance telling you to, you know, just wait, just wait, you Mm -hmm. know. Mm-hmm. My, my goodness, you know, the, the divine works in amazing ways. And when you do have that sense of gratitude and kindness, it just becomes that much more amplified. Right. I'm finding anyway. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and maybe this, this, this has just been the beginning, you know, sharing, putting this out here in this format is just going to lead you to an amazing other book project where you do share your journaling, your grief and your journey and yeah. Christopher's story. And it's another avenue um, based on the confidence of knowing that, you know, you've already done this. Like, I mean, you put your foot out there, you've shared your story, your truth. And now it's it's just a matter of, of doing the rest of the work. Whoops, I'm fading out. So <laughs> okay. I love green screen. <laughs> I look like I've got warts on my face. Right now, yeah, it's not about being perfect. <laughs> there you go, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, dare to be rare. <laughs> yeah. 
It's but, back uh, showing up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so you know, this 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 has been a wonderful conversation. I thank you for joining us and sharing the story of Christopher here. And and here I go blotchy again. <laughs> okay. Better blotches than crying tears, right? So <laughs> I still see and hear you. <laughs> Anyway, um, I just want to share that together, collectively, the authors of The Secret Child Life After Loss are putting together really special free gift recordings. And um, there's a master class in there by one of our people. Um, and it's, it's all available for you. So you can learn about each of these wonderful speakers and participants in the book, but also per, um, avail yourself to their free gifts and their, their wisdom and their kindness in sharing so much of themselves, their heart, their spirit and soul with you. So please go to www.thesecretchildbookseries.com forward slash W-O-K. And really, when you think about that W-O-K, we are okay, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never got that until now. <laughs> You're full of wisdom today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good day. <laughs> But uh, anyway, Connie, it's been a, a real pleasure to spend this time with you. I know so many people are, you're going to touch so many people's lives during this conversation as, as it's going out globally and reaching, touching new people. And I thank you for being a part of my life, my journey, along with the Week of Kindness and Gratitude Summit and free gift giveaway. Well, it's a gift to me and thank you for having me. And it's a gift to be able to share the story. So thank you. You're welcome. So join us for the next episode. You will not want to miss any of this series. Bye for now. And there we are. Yeah, perfect. That was easy.